Hey everybody, it's time for Two for Tuesday. Uh, I have two of our amazing young leaders here today. Uh, we have Pastor Jeff Dossey and uh, Mr. Ian Hamm. Uh, Ian is uh, our Bible high school Bible teacher uh, extraordinaire, uh, athletic sports director over at the academy and uh, helps uh, with the venue preaching. And Pastor Jeff, well, everybody knows Pastor Jeff, right? And so uh, we're here today just to have a short conversation with you guys. We're calling it Two for Tuesday. So you guys can kind of see how some of our leaders are doing uh, in the midst of this process. So, uh, Pastor Jeff, how are you and your family doing through this uh, whole isolation thing? So, for the most part, we're actually doing really well because uh, I feel like outside of school and ministry and stuff, we kind of live in isolation already because we never really go anywhere unless we're like going out to eat or something. And um, that's pretty much it. And so... Uh, she goes to the store pretty much every week because she doesn't trust me to wipe down uh, carts and stuff like that. And so, yeah. So she's a <laughs> smart that, woman. Yeah, I know, man. Because I, I wouldn't do it anyway. You're, right. uh, you're not alone. You're not alone. Don't feel bad. I just thought about it. Yeah. yeah. But then, um, so for me, like you know, we play racquetball pretty much like five or six days a week, and then I work out with Jason or Dr. Harrison uh, two days out of the week. And so I feel like I'm getting my time out and stuff like that. So I don't yeah. feel that isolated. Yeah. Now, uh, for those of you that don't know that are uh, watching, uh, Pastor Jeff and Ian have two of the youngest members of the first family. Uh, Judah is just almost a year old. He, where is he at? 14 months. 14 months. Holy Toledo. And Eliza is yeah, 14 months. seven, eight months. Six months, okay. So uh, just uh, two cutest kids in the world. Thank God they look like their mothers. And so, uh, Ian, how are you and uh, how are you and the family doing with all of this? Uh, we're we're hanging in there. Um, kind of the same thing as Jeff. It's, we kind of just hang out and are kind of homebodies to begin with. Um, but we have been going on more walks and uh, just kind of checking out the B section a little bit more, which has been nice. But yeah, we're we're hanging in there. Eliza's getting to the point where she's trying to get into everything and pinch warming around and so it's, it's been good to be home and actually spend more time with them absolutely um, with sports you know basketball season ended uh right before spring break and it was you know three four times a week i was home until nine o'clock at night sometimes right. and so just spending more time with them it's been it has been terrible it's definitely different but not you know not not too much different than the norm at the same time so yeah you know, it's been good and for those of you that don't know uh, ian's wife adeline is our fun church financial secretary so we see her uh, three, four days a week, and she's working from home, too. So uh, it's a good situation. It's not a bad situation at all. So the next question for you guys is how both of you are teachers at the academy. And so in that regard, that's probably the thing that has changed most in your lives is your kind of your lives surrounding the academy and teaching and all of that. So how is online teaching going, Jeff? So for me, it's a... Uh pro and a con thing and I think that's probably for everybody so the pro is I don't have to deal with the behavior you know what I'm saying <laughs> of all the kids all the time although it's not even that bad to be honest with you just a few um also a lot of flexibility in my schedule you know where again you know the racquetball we do t Tuesday Thursday Saturdays that in the early morning and then with Monday Wednesday now we're playing with even and now um in the afternoons at like 1 30 well, none of none of that could probably happen if we were doing school. So I really right. like that because I'm really trying to change my life in terms of what I eat and working out and all that stuff. So that's been probably the biggest blessing. Good. Um, the con is, you know, this year more than probably all the other two years, I've been able to just really see God do ministry with me at the academy. And so with it, with it being not being there and just amongst the kids and just handling stuff on an everyday basis, I can definitely tell that that has been lost. Although I still try to implement a lot of Christian type themes in my English stuff. For example, we do question of the days every week and um, it's always something that'll be Christian thing or something like that, but it's not the same thing. Yeah. So I would say that's been the biggest con for me is not being able to do the daily ministry face to face. Right. Hey Ian, what about you? How's it? Uh, how's this online teaching thing going? It's been a huge transition, that's for sure. Uh, I know a lot of us, well, none of us were probably expecting to have to go to online, and then none of us are quite, um, weren't quite equipped 
to do online teaching. I can relate. I can relate from the church yeah. side. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a whole new beast. Um, I don't know if I'd rather be online or be in. It's, it's a hard. It's a hard call. It is. But it's it's been interesting for me though because teaching Bible online is very difficult. I'm sure I, you know doing Bible studies at Sunday school online and even just sermons. It's different because you don't have that interaction. But I have seen um, a couple of my students who don't open up as much in class or at all. They kind of just sit there and kind of take everything in. Um, they have really kind of wrestled with what we're talking about and are asking really good questions. I'm able to email them back and um, interact with them a little bit that way. So it's like a, you lose the day in, day out interaction, but then you're gaining the kids that are kind of opening up more and really Absolutely. kind of like material. Right. I think in a lot of ways, this generation, especially the ones you guys deal with in uh, high school, middle school, high school, uh, they're used to being online in a social environment and so maybe you're getting a little bit more authenticity uh from you know from from what they're actually thinking yeah. and stuff, feeling the, the stuff that they're writing to me it's very authentic like they are right. yeah, they are not bashful to tell you kind of how, where they're at and what they're going through yep. um especially when it's you know they know it's a not it's not anonymous but i'm the only one reading it no one else right. can see what they're writing so it's that's been cool to see kind of just them really telling me where they are and not you know, just kind of carrying themselves in a, in a fake way or not an right. authentic way. So it's really cool to kind of see them really wrestling with their, their lives and the reality they're in. So, yeah. I think it'll be interesting after this is all done how you guys can kind of implement some uh, maybe hybrid or online, uh, oh, yeah. you know, assignments or different things that you guys can continue to, to I interact in that way. I have every intention of using. Yeah, me too. Almost for all my homework assignments will probably be online next year, like yeah, and stuff like no, that. It's, I'll, it's, I'll, I'll, I'll make a huge use of it. Yeah, it's definitely a lot easier, and like you said, very honest. Like um, several weeks ago, one of my questions was, if you could ask God anything, what would it be? And I just remember specifically um, reading a certain young lady, and she was just talking about why would God allow me to live if he knew I would struggle so much at these different things and, you know, all this stuff. And I was just like, wow, this yeah. is crazy. So, yeah, the Good. online thing is a beast. Yeah. So what are you guys uh, missing most in this season? Oh, absolutely. Um, um, it doesn't have to relate to teaching. It doesn't have to relate to that. Yeah. But, yeah. Definitely just the face-to-face. I mean, you guys know, like, most people call me a social butterfly which wasn't my life like the only thing that the only really the only reason why i became that is because i knew i have so much word in me and it would be almost sinful to not be amongst people to kind of make ways to present that word and so i was like god you have to change my life because i used to be very 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 shy but um and so it's like again back to the school and just with youth group and all that stuff I want to be face to face talking and joking with them and stuff and really dealing with them because for so many of them, I haven't even been able to talk to them as much because right. they kind of doing their own thing and stuff. And so that's yeah. to me, I just can't wait till I can get back in their faces. I agree with you completely. Like we got our half our baseball season cut off. Um, and a mm. lot of the kids I have in class, I got really close relationships with and so not be able to see them every day and outside of school spending time with them. Um, yeah, then you just you miss the face to face with those kids that you're really growing with and really growing close to and reaching. And then you're feeling like, man, they're like I'm slipping out of your fingers because yeah. they're not going to see you for nine weeks to the rest of the you know over absolutely. The and so it's uh, yeah, I miss just the social interaction as well, and then just the relationship with the kids, you know, messing around with them and talking to them every day. Yeah, the relationships. Yeah. I think that's what it boils down to. Uh, no matter what age or stage that we're in it is the relationships that at the end of the day are most important and sometimes we lose focus of that you know when all these other distractions and things that are out there uh but you know that's uh, something that i think god's doing in this season is helping us to value the relationships Absolutely. that we have with with others in a in a more profound way so uh what do you guys now i mean you may have answered it with your pre- last uh question what are you guys looking forward to most as we kind of come out of this? Yeah, I think it will be that. Um, being able to do youth group again, like in the building with the people and stuff. Um, being able to meet with my discipleship group face to face and stuff like that. Like, it's funny because we were actually talking last night on our um, group call or whatever. Like, how can we 
get together in some kind of way to maintain social distancing. We're like, how about we just all go get food somewhere and then go to a parking lot and like sit in our trunks or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And just, yeah. <laughs> there are people doing like, that. All, there, there are. I know. Yeah, so they were like, we want to meet. And I'm like, guys, you know, I'm not a problem. Like, if you guys want to meet, I'm all for that. But we got to, because, you know, Anna is a nurse. And so we always asking, like, Nurse Anna, what are your thoughts on this? <laughs> so, yeah. And she's yeah, like, no doubt. So, yeah, like, that's what I can't wait. Hey, we got a big parking lot of church, man. Use it. And we actually talked about doing that. Yeah. Even though we're back by the um, right. room and stuff. So, yeah, we're going to, we'll probably, we talked about doing it sometime this week. So, awesome. we do all. Well, let me know, man. That'd be awesome to get some Absolutely. pictures of. Yeah, we'll do a drone. We'll fly a drone up and get a nice little aerial shot. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Ian, what are you looking forward to? Mine's actually a little different. I am looking forward to interacting and seeing everyone again. But mine's a little different. I was just thinking the first thing that popped in my head was I'm looking forward to going to public and be able to go down the aisle I want to go down the way I want to go down it, and not feel judged for not wearing a mask. Like. <laughs> I feel I feel so like everyone's looking at me when I walk through public. And I'm just like, ah, stop! Like, <laughs> so I'm wow. looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to go to go out in public and not be you know conscious of people around me and worried about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. and that's not that's absolutely I agree with you 100. percent I'm looking forward to going to the grocery store, not having to worry about there's toilet paper, you uh, know, not standing you know back six six aisles back yeah. to get to the register. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way they have you checking out at Walmart now is just absolute. I, you know what? The first time I went in Walmart after all this was, it was like two or three weeks after the social distancing. I wasn't scared until I went into Walmart. Yeah. And it was like, are you kidding? What is going on with this? This is the apocalypse, man. What is going on? It's crazy. I'm looking at getting reprimanded for going down the wrong way. Right. Oh, yeah. I got yelled at by someone. Ann and I got yelled at yesterday by a lady. There's follow the arrows on the floor. I went, are you kidding? What arrows, right? Yeah, and see, last time I went, last time I went, I don't think they had all that stuff up. But again, Jess has only been going because, again, she doesn't want me in there at all because she thinks I might get the coordinator. So, get the what? I call it the coordinator. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> Ian, I was gonna say the same thing. I didn't know if I misheard it or what. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's uh, let's kind of wrap this up. Uh, let me ask you a serious question because uh, I think it, this is important for all of us to consider, whether we're teachers, leaders, or uh, just really followers of Christ, disciples of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. What is God trying to teach us? Or what do you feel like God's teaching you in the midst of this season? And so what's a lesson you think that he's teaching you as we're walking through all this? I think the lesson that I ultimately come away with that I've been trying to kind of teach in my sermons, you know, for Wednesday and Thursday is no matter what happens in terms of a pandemic, epidemic, tra tragedies or anything, like there are no days off when it comes to God. You know what I'm saying? Because I feel like so many people have, like, pretty much gotten to this place of, well, there isn't a church building to go to, so I guess we kind of have right. this time off from growing our Christianity, but that doesn't make sense. You know, the thing that I tell the kids that I often look forward to more than anything when summer comes as a teacher is I'm no longer feeling rushed in the mornings to do my morning time with him. But, like, I get to wake up at, like, 6 or 7 o'clock and spend as much time as I want kind of just reading and listening to the music and praying and stuff. And it's the same thing kind of now where we're not bound by a timetable online teaching. And so I kind of get to wake up and just get my personal time and everything like that. But for me, it's like the teaching or the time that what, he's, what I feel like he's teaching us is there are no excuses when we come out of this time. Like so many people have had the flexibility and all these different things to grow a relationship with him any way they wanted it to. And so whenever we come back and we get to the busyness of life, I don't want to hear any excuses of, well, I just don't have time. Because when right. you did have all the time in the world, what did you do with it? Yeah, that's and a good if you point. Didn't do, yeah, if you didn't spend the time with him then, don't tell me that you don't right. have the time now. Just simply say, I don't want him right now. Right. You know, and you got to live it. You got to live with that. Yeah. How about you, Ian? What? What are you thinking God's teaching you through this? Well, the first thing, he's really been um, kind of telling me to slow down, as Jeff was talking about. You have Now you have the time. You're not rushed. Um, and I, I think I talked about this in our, in our pastoral roundtable. The, 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 the blessings behind 
kind of these these struggles, right? Like there's, there's blessings and everything. And so just being able to have more time to kind of reset, reestablish a routine. Um, and so I really feel like he's like, hey, just slow down, get back going in this um, so that when life speeds up again, right. you have a foundation to keep, you know, keep growing, keep going. Because there is really, especially mm-hmm. now all the time we have. And so really just kind of slow down and just re- reestablish and, and, and re firm your feet, you know, in your relation growing because now you have all the time time to do it. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. I didn't have this, uh, and that's, those are both great answers. So what would you, as, as leaders of teenagers, as teachers, as leaders of the church, what would you, if you had to give some advice right now to our church members, uh, what is the most important thing they can be doing right now to prepare for what's next? So the best thing that I would say they can do is, reach out to the lead, their leaders. So whether it's Ann's Thrive people, reach out to Ann and say, or whether it's you, Dr. Harrison, whatever, reach out to us and say, okay, give me kind of like a survival kit or a growing kit. You know what I'm saying? We can tell them, hey, how about you just start, have you ever read a gospel? It's been three years. Read a gospel, right? You know what I'm saying? Start reading a right. gospel. Spend at least 10 authentic, real minutes in real prayer like honestly talking to god about what's on your heart and stuff and asking him to give you the necessary supplies to carry out his will um give them some uh, sermons to listen to and stuff like that and also try to connect with them on personal levels that's what i would tell them Good. to survive with and grow with for the rest of their lives yeah what about you ian what do you think uh, you covered a lot of it i was going to say just start small like in like the 10 minutes of just Pray until you pray, as the Puritans used to say, right? Like, just start small, small attainable mm-hmm. goals and let that build day in and day out. Just be consistent with it, though. Um, you know, you don't want to go too big because then you get discouraged. So, yeah. you, got the time, you got the time now, start small, start implementing everything Jeff just said as you go. And it, and that, that's going to help, again, just when life speeds up on you, you have the, front, the foundation that you're standing on that will stand and stay. And so start small and grow it from there. All right, man. That's great advice, guys. Great advice. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, praying for you guys and your new online environment. you got a few weeks left. Uh, it's May now. At the end of the week, it'll be May. And, man, you know how May is. Woo! I know. Don't, don't blink. It's gone. So it's yeah. a whirlwind. So uh, we're praying for you guys. God bless you. We'll see you guys soon, okay? Sounds Absolutely. Good. All right. Have a great week. God bless, guys. Bye-bye. See ya.